Hello, sports fans and out of the park baseball fans, particularly. Today, uh, we are going to be starting the 1996 season of my 1994 White Sox playthrough. Now, in a previous episode, which I will have in the uh, on the end screen uh, that you can click on when the video is over, I uh, went through the entire off season of 90, um, 95, 96, and so now we find ourselves on the doorstep of the nine, the beginning of the ninety six season, where the White Sox are coming off an eighty one and eighty one. Uh, season in 1995, and we acquired Ken Griffey Jr. in the offseason, and we extended Big Frank Thomas's contract. So, um, so that there's a, that's a couple of highlights that we have going for us. Um, I'm going to take a look right now um, at a few things before we get the season started. The first, uh, actually, the first thing I want to take a look at is. Um, the uh, reports and information, and we're going to take a look at the, um, where is it, the preseason, they have a uh, preseason prediction thing here, there it is, preseason predictions, and uh, as you can see by this uh, graphic that I have up on the screen right now, we are expected to finish second in the AL Central. Um, twenty game. They think we're going to be twenty games worse than the Indians with a record of seventy eight and eighty four. I like how they think the Indians are just going to completely run away with this thing, and then uh, we, Kansas City, Milwaukee, and Minnesota are all going to be twenty plus games back. Now I can't say for sure that that's not going to happen. Who knows? Uh, but let's hope it doesn't, is what I'm trying to say. So you got the Boston, they're predicting the Boston Red Sox to win the East with 97 wins, and um, the Oakland Athletics to win the West with 91 wins, which would be refreshing because if you remember or if you watched the previous video, you know that the Texas Rangers won that division in 1995 with a sub-500 record. Um and so, let's see. And for the uh, National League, they predict the Braves to win 103 games. Wow. And Houston to win 101. Yeah, Houston won the World Series. I've only, I started this playthrough in 1994. The Astros beat us in 94 in the World Series. And then they uh, beat the Toronto Blue Jays, I think, in last year's in the 95 World Series. So, the first two seasons I've been doing this, the Astros have been the world champions, and now they're predicting they're going to win 101 games, too, on top of that. That's all we don't need. Um, I'm going to go to, let's see, uh, we'll go to my record. Again, just to refresh everybody's memory about my managerial history so far. As I mentioned, I've done the first two seasons of the 94 replay, starting with 1994. And we have proceeded to go through 1995. In 94, I had the White Sox at 89 and 73. And in 95, I had them at 81 and 81. 500 record. Overall, that makes me 170 and 154. And um, we are going to be starting this season and hoping that uh, hoping for some uh, another another playoff appearance, another hopefully really World Series appearance. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be possible. But now let's go to the White Sox team and look at the, um, uh, let's see, what are we, the front office. I think it's the front office we want to look at, and we want to look at personnel. And you can see that with the record that I have, I have a decent reputation. Here you got the reputation uh, line. And I am, of course, the manager of the team. I'm not the general manager. I leave that up to the AI because I don't like all the stuff that um, 
you know, goes in with, you know, um, extending contracts, reassigning people here and there, and blah, blah, blah. So I don't do all that. I just manage the team. I make the lineups. I decide the pitching rotation based on the guys that the general manager says are on my roster. So anyway, I've got a decent reputation. I don't know how good that really is. I don't even know if decent is better than average or worse than average. They're all in the yellow, though. The only guy we have in the green with a good reputation is our hitting coach. So hopefully uh, we all continue to get better, and I'm sure if we win, we will continue to get better. So um, there's that, and now we're going to take a look at the lineups. And um, this is the lineup versus righty with DH. And, of course, this was back in the 90s. So we don't play the National League teams. So there is no, um, you know, just right-handed lineup with pitcher batting. So this is the lineup I uh, have put together. Uh, the lineup versus righties will be uh, Nunnally leading off and playing center field. Ken Griffey Jr. in right. Now, we got him, I would put him in center, but we got him and it lists him as a right fielder, the game does, so I don't want to put him somewhere where he's not listed. Um, Frank Thomas would be the DH, Julio Franco at first, Robin Ventura at third, Lance Johnson in left, Ozzie Guillen at short, um, Todd Pratt at catcher, and Grayback, Craig Grayback at second. We're... In my opinion, we're pretty weak at catcher and second base. Um, Gein will be the shortstop. We've had him for the last for the both of the uh, previous two years since I've started this, but we did have Felix Fermin last year, and so Gein and Fermin would switch off every now and again at shortstop. Um, and we had Karkovice up until you know through last year, but we lost Karkovice, I guess, in free agency this year. So this would be the versus left-handed pitcher lineup. It's a lot of the same. It's, uh, you know, maybe guys are slightly different positions, but Lance Johnson leading off playing center, John Nunnally in left, Frank Thomas at DH, Ken Griffey Jr. in right, Robin Ventura at third, Julio Franco at first, Ozzie Guillen at short, Livingston at second, and Todd Pratt at catcher. Um, and for our pitching, the rotation is going to be Jack McDowell, Wilson Alvarez, Alex Fernandez is the top three. And then our fifth starter is Jason Beret, who we've also had the last two years, but he had yo-yoed between the, um, starting rotation and the bullpen. We're going to start him this year, uh, in the rotation and see how that goes. Um, I guess we could put McCaskill or Willie Blair in the rotation if we had to, but uh, I'm going to start it off with him. And then uh, Kevin Haber, I believe, is a rookie this year. And uh, he has some good, you know, if you look at his, uh, if you look at all of his, uh, his bars here, he looks like he's pretty good. Um, and uh, 23 years old, so hopefully he doesn't get overwhelmed. Uh, by being on the big club right now, but uh, that's, you know, the GM said, hey, this guy's ready, and so here he is uh, from Man out of Mansfield, Texas. So we are going to go with him in the rotation, and so let's go back to the manager's office, and uh, with all of that, we're going to play the first game of the year, the Seattle game. Let me see. We've got an important message. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, whatever. And we're going to go on to the game. And so you can see, I just went over the lineup. So, and we've got black Jack McDowell on the mound against, uh, Jim Converse is pitching for the Mariners. Their lineup will be Johnny Damon leading off and playing center. Tony Batista at second. Tino Martinez at first, Greg Vaughn, who they acquired in the offseason, probably because they lost Griffey to us, playing left field, Edgar Martinez at third, 
Reggie Jefferson at DH, Ayala at right field, Dan Wilson at catcher, and then a guy named New at shortstop. So that is a pretty formidable lineup, and we'll have to see if we can uh, soldier through and beat them here in opening day in Seattle. And uh, looking forward to this one for sure. So we're up at the plate. Um, with John Nunnally, and I am going to have him swing away. And that is a high fly ball. Did it get out? No, it's a fly ball. It's just a fly ball. So <laughs> we've got Ken Griffey. Here he is. Ken Griffey for his first at bat as a white sock, and he strikes out. Come on. You got you to gotta show up your former team, my man. And that's going to be a walk to Big Frank. They walk Frank. And um, that brings to the plate Julio Franco. And Franco strikes out with some high heat in his face. So we're back. We're out in the field. Jack McDowell um, had a good year for us last year. And he was a workhorse. I don't believe he was out of the lineup very much. There's the first out. And... Uh, Tony Batista is up. Of course, I remember Tony Batista had a really weird batting stance, which the game does not show. But, um, yeah, he would stand like almost like he was facing, completely facing the pitcher. Um, they got a man on, though, with, uh, I think, two down. Yep. And that's going to be a strikeout. So McDowell has a pretty good first inning. And um, Jim Converse will go back out there. And he's pitching to Robin Ventura. And Ventura is going to probably hit a fly ball. Fly ball to center. One away pretty quickly. And Lance Johnson, the left fielder, is up. And Lance Johnson is going to hit a medium deep fly ball. And he is out. And... Ozzy Gian, our shortstop, here he is. And Ozzy Gian with a little base knock that gets past the outfielder all the way to the wall. That's craziness. All right, so we got a double out of Gian or a single and an error. However you want to package it, I'll take it. So Todd Pratt is up. And Todd Pratt is going to ground out unless there's an error and there isn't. So we're going to the bottom of the second. Edgar Martinez in the Hall of Fame as a DH. And he's flying out to right. And Reggie Jefferson, not in anybody's Hall of Fame, but he does walk. And uh, Danny Ayala, the right fielder. And he's going to rip one down the left field line. So, uh, we've got so we got traffic on the base pads with only one out and Dan Wilson, the catcher, up. And he's going to ground out, and that is a double play and no runs come in. We got out of that one. Nice. So, you, uh, you got uh, Jim Converse pitching to Craig Grayback here in the third and Craig Grayback is going to lace a little base hit little knock for Grayback love it he's got to really come through for us because um he's like the best second baseman we have and that's not even saying a lot so John Nunnally will be up and he walks so we got two guys on with nobody away yet and Ken Griffey Jr. wouldn't you love this and Ken Griffey Jr. strikes out again. Come on. What is that all about? And uh, we've got uh, Frank Thomas. Come on, Frank. Oh, it gets past the catcher. It gets past Wilson. So now we got runners at second and third with only one out. And Thomas up. They probably should walk him, but no, they, strike, they opt to strike him out. And that brings Julio down by the schoolyard, Frank. Go and he walks. So now we've got the bases full. It's a nice thing, but with two outs, that makes it very key here. Four, and the ball gets past Dan Wilson again. So we score a run. A run comes in without uh, Ventura having to do anything. But let's see if he can get a base hit anyhow. No, it does not appear he can. So we did score a run, but it was mainly because of uh, 
couple of big mistakes by the uh, Mariners. Uh, Jim New, the shortstop is up, and I guess he's new. <laughs> he strikes out, so he can go take a new seat back in his dugout. And um, that is going to be, uh, yeah, Guillen. Guillen takes the pop-up behind uh, the shortstop infield, the dirt infield, and Tony Batiste is up. And that should be a fly out. And that is it. And McDowell is on cruise control right here. We go to the top of the fourth. One thing I like about the first game of the year is everybody's fresh, so I don't have to worry about a dogged bullpen. But you do have to worry about that later on as the year goes, as the uh, season moves along. Ozzie Gian's up with one down. And he is going to get on by an error. Tell you, Gian, he is scrappy. He's a scrappy one. He was a good manager for that one year in 2005, too. Um, Todd Pratt up. And Todd Pratt, you're going to get a hit for me? No, you're not. It's two down with Gian at first and Craig Grayback is the batter. And he is going to fly out. But... We uh, we didn't come away with anything there. Um, Tino Martinez is the batter against McDowell, who has been really on top of his game this this game so far. There's a fly out to left, and uh, Greg Vaughn is up, and they walk Vaughn, which is probably not a terrible idea. Edgar Martinez is up, and Edgar Martinez looks like he's going to foul. No, he dropped the ball. It would have been, oh, my God. And air, he drops the foul ball in, uh, in foul territory. So Martinez stays alive, but that only gets him a deep fly to center. So there still is two outs with a man aboard. And Reggie Jefferson up, and that is going to be a base hit, and we are going to stop him at third. And that brings up Danny Ayala. And did he, did he homer? He homered! Oh my god. So the Mariners now have a 3-1 to one lead. Uh, and a Danny Ayala, whoever that is, home run. And Dan Wilson is up. And he is going to lace a base hit to center. So now all of a sudden McDowell's just falling apart here. Uh, here in the bottom of the fourth. And there's another base hit. He is just completely falling apart. And up steps Johnny Damon. And uh, Pratt tries to throw him out, did he? No, he did not. So now Johnny Damon's up with runners at second and third, and he will ground out, it looks like, and that, thankfully, is what happens. So now we're losing 3-1. to one. On opening day in Seattle, top of the fifth, Jim Converse pitching like a, like a stud and Nunnally up at the plate. And he walks Nunnally. There's good news, and now Ken Griffey Jr., who was struck out twice. But did he hit it out? Did he hit that out? Yes, he did, and we tied the game on a Ken Griffey Jack. Finally. That's why the guy went out. That's why my GM went out and got him. So now it is 3-3, and we have Big Frank up. And Big Frank is going to hit it out. Is he going to hit it out? No, it's going to be a fly ball. So that is two away and, or no, it's only one away. Julio Franco up. And Julio Franco laces one right down the line. That should be a double. And he pulls in at second. So, yeah, now we're getting all on Converse like I know we should because Converse was a real player. I mean, I know out of the park, you know, they make up fictional players and stuff, but Jim Converse was real, and he was real bad. So now we've got runners at the corners because there was an error at first base. 
and that brings Lance Johnson up. Runners are at the corners, only one out. Let's just avoid the double play, and he did, and he laced the ball right up the middle. But the runner couldn't go to third. So now we've got a 4-3 to three lead. And we got Ozzie Guillen up, who's been on, I think, twice. Yeah, but this time he's going to pop out to second. You can't, but Guillen, you can't hope he's going to get on all the time. Todd Pratt is up, and that's not really encouraging, and he strikes out. But at least we did take the lead, and now we're going back to the bottom of the fifth with Tony Batista up for them. And uh, that's going to be a home run. No, it isn't. No, it's a fly ball. <laughs> yeah, I was getting a little carried away, but T Tino Martinez is up, and he is going to pop out. Yes, foul ball, pop out to the third baseman, Ventura. And Greg Vaughn is up. Got to watch out for him. He could hit one out. He doesn't, though. He hits a ground ball to Ventura, and he throws on to first to get him. We are going to the top of the sixth here with um, Craig Gray back up. Converse is still out there, and they walk Gray back to lead off the uh, inning. And now Nunnally, back to Nunnally. And Nunnally is going to be out on a great play by the outfielder. Unreal. Bill Risley is now out there for Seattle, and we've got Ken Griffey Jr. coming to the plate. And did he hit it out? Did he hit his second home run? He did. Ken Griffey Jr. is two for four today. Two jacks and two strikeouts. And, uh, yeah, that puts us ahead 6-3. Now I'm loving this. Um, Frank Thomas is up against Risley. And Risley was real, too, by the way. Um, he was good at times, at least. I remember he wasn't totally terrible. And um, and here comes Julio Franco. And Julio Franco laces a base hit. Love it. But we do have two outs. So um, Robin High Venture is up and he strikes out. So I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send uh, McDowell back out there. I'm hoping he can get through the seventh. Really. I mean, to be honest, I really want to see him get through the seventh. That's a ground ball to third. Ventura takes care of it, and there's one down. Um, Reggie Jefferson up. And Reggie Jefferson's going to hit a fly ball to right field. That's taken care of by Griffey, as you might expect. And Danny Ayala, who homered this game, is up at the plate, and he is going to line out to Guillen. So if we can just get him through one more inning, I, I would take that, but I'm going to get him through as much as I can because I don't want to, I don't trust that bullpen. Johnson, Lance Johnson with a base hit. And we got a three run lead. I'd like to extend that so that I can extend McDowell as far as possible. Ozzie Guillen is the batter against Risley. And he is going to hit a fly ball to left. One down, and Todd Pratt up. And Todd Pratt is going to hit a worm burner and into a double play. So we did not get another run and cushion that lead any further. And here we are in the seventh with McDowell still going. And he strikes out Wilson. Jim knew the shortstop. He strikes out Jim New. The story. I don't think he's got he's got plenty of gas in the tank. I don't think he's running low on gas. And Johnny Damon is going to fly out to right field. That brings us to the top of the eighth, where Craig Grayback, the second baseman, is up, and he's one for two today and flies out. Back to the top of the lineup with John Nunnally. And John Nunnally strikes out. And here he is, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, Ken Griffey Jr. 
two for four with two home runs, and that's another one, a third home run. Three home runs for Junior. Unreal. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So now you got Frank Thomas, who hasn't decided to help him at all. He has a base hit. That's nice, but... I mean, really, I'll take it. There's two outs with uh, Julio down by the schoolyard up against Jeff Nelson now. Jeff Nelson is out there pitching, and that's going to be, um, oh, I, you know, I'm going to hold up. I'm going to hold up. Guess that was a base hit. And uh, Robin Ventura is going to ground out to first base, and that does end that part of the inning. And I didn't warm anybody up, and I didn't want to. We're going out there with McDowell. We're going to let McDowell pitch it, and there's a strikeout. McDowell, man, he is not the least bit tired. It doesn't look like Tino Martinez is up. And Tino Martinez is going to walk. Greg Vaughn is up. And Greg Vaughn is going to ground, hopefully, into a double play, but he doesn't. He just We just get the uh, man at second on the fielder's choice. And that brings up Edgar Martinez. And Edgar Martinez is going to line a base hit double, looks like. And that is going to score another run. Still going to try to get McDowell through this inning. I mean, I think it's key for me. I want to get him through this inning. And maybe not. <laughs> maybe that's not going to happen. Because now it's 7-5. to five. And I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to let him pitch to Ayala. All right. I'm going to I got to go get somebody up in the pen. I didn't really want to have to do this. Uh, but I am going to go. Um. Get somebody up in the bullpen. Yeah, it looks like McDowell's just about done. We'll get Ignaciak up. Um, and then we will pitch to Dan Wilson. And that should be a ground out and end the inning. And so we do have the two-run lead going into the top of the ninth with Lance Johnson up. And he's going to ground out to short. So there's one down and Ozzie Guillen at the plate. And Ozzie Guillen is out on a great play by the, the left fielder. Unreal. And Todd Pratt is the batter. And he laces his first base hit of the year between short and third. And Craig Grayback is the batter. And that's going to be a ball that gets past um, uh, Wilson again the, for the third time. And now we are finally out of the inning. And I will go get um, Ignaciak. And it says he's ready, so we're going to bring him in. Going to go back out. And he is going to pitch to Pablo Ramos, who is a pinch hitter for them. And he laces a base hit right down the line. Is that going to be a double? Probably. They still need two runs, though. So that's the good part. Johnny Damon is going to hit another. It's going to get a base hit. But they didn't even score on that. So there's, I guess, runners at the corners. That will be a double play. Nice. All right. So it's 7-6. to six, But there's nobody on. And Tino Martinez is the batter. And he's not going to ground out because Guillen makes an error. Come on, Guillen. Greg Vaughn is the batter, and he is going to get a base hit, which probably is going to not tie, it won't tie the game. But man, Ignaciak, we need you to get an out right now. And he does. So I think that that's it. 
and uh, and we do win the game. We we hang on to win it seven six on opening day in Seattle. There's the uh, line scores for the batters for both teams. Um, we had twelve hits today, and uh, um, Griffey had three home runs. He was three for five with three home runs. Uh, McDowell pitched eight, gave up seven hits, two earned runs, five runs altogether, and Ignatiak got the save, although he didn't really deserve it because he gave up a run and he had runners all over the place. But that's how the rules go. And so we'll finish today. And uh, I've received a message. Roster moves received five field. And we lost Willie Blair. All right, so Willie Blair was in our bullpen. Um, I wish he had sent somebody like Ignatiak down who we'd actually used. But anyway, that's it. Uh, we're one and zero. We start the season on a good, uh, good on good footing. And that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke.